Starlink is a constellation of fairly small communication satellites that exist in low Earth orbit, which would access the internet anywhere on the globe. That's the long-term vision. Satellite internet has come a long way since it first appeared in the late 1990s. It used to be a last-ditch option, only used when no other internet connections were available. But with the arrival of the Starlink network, satellite internet has become accessible to almost everyone. Imagine being able to get internet in the middle of nowhere, using a large satellite dish on your roof that connects to a satellite orbiting 550 kilometers above Earth. That's pretty incredible by itself. What's even more impressive is that these Starlink satellites zip around at a staggering 27,000 kilometers per hour, sending and receiving data at lightning speeds. The dish on your house and the satellite are constantly adjusting to keep a direct line of communication, switching to a new satellite every few minutes as they move out of range. Sounds like magic, right? Stick around to see how it works. First, let's talk about the difference between your typical TV satellite dish and the Starlink ground dish, affectionately called Dishy McFlatface by Elon Musk. TV dishes use a parabolic reflector to capture TV signals from satellites that are 35,000 kilometers away. They only receive signals and can't send data back. Dishy, on the other hand, both sends and receives internet data from Starlink satellites just 550 kilometers away. Even though these satellites are much closer, the technology needed to send a signal over that distance is still amazing. The beams between Dishy and the satellite have to be very precise and powerful, constantly adjusting to stay aligned. TV satellites, which are the size of a van, broadcast signals over huge areas. In contrast, Starlink satellites are much smaller, about the size of a table, and they orbit closer to Earth to provide fast, low-latency internet. Because their coverage area is smaller, there needs to be thousands of these satellites working together to cover the entire planet. Now, let's take a closer look at Dishy McFlatface. It has motors and an Ethernet cable connecting it to your router. The motors help with the initial setup, pointing the dish in the right general direction. Inside, Dishy has an aluminum backplate and a large printed circuit board, PCB, with many microchips and antennas. On the PCB, there are 1,280 antennas arranged in a honeycomb pattern. These antennas work together in a phased array to send and receive signals from the satellites. Each antenna is controlled by microchips on the PCB, creating a powerful array that communicates with the satellites. The antennas use a complex system to generate electromagnetic waves, which are sent out and received back from space. They work with high-frequency signals, much different from the electricity in your home. The antennas are designed to handle specific frequencies, blocking out other signals, and working together to create a strong beam that reaches the satellites. Let's see how a single antenna can team up with others to create a powerful beam capable of reaching space. Picture a single antenna as being about a centimeter wide. On its own, it's like flicking a light bulb on and off and expecting to see it from the International Space Station. Pretty unlikely, right? This is where the impressive Dishy McFlatface PCB comes in. With its 55 centimeter wide board containing 1,280 antennas arranged in a hexagonal pattern. The method of combining the power of all these antennas is called beamforming. So, how does beamforming work? Let's start simple with just two antennas. Each antenna produces an electromagnetic wave that spreads out like a balloon. At any given point in space, the electric fields from both antennas combine. In some areas, the fields align perfectly, adding together through constructive interference, making the signal stronger. In other areas, they cancel each other out through destructive interference, making the signal weaker. This constructive interference creates a focused zone where the signals from both antennas combine to make a stronger, more directed beam than either could alone. When you add more antennas, this focused zone becomes even tighter and more powerful. By using all 1,280 antennas together, Dishy can form a beam so intense and directed that it reaches outer space with ease. 
You might think that 1,180 antennas would just make the signal 1,280 times stronger, but it's actually more like 3,500 times stronger. This is because the constructive and destructive interference patterns work together, almost like using mirrors to focus all the light from a single source into one powerful beam. So, Dishy McFlatface and the Starlink satellites use some seriously advanced science and engineering. To fully grasp how it all works, you'd need to dive into a lot of math and physics. But even without all the technical details, it's clear that this technology is nothing short of amazing. Let's continue with how we can sweep this powerful beam across the sky and fill it with hundreds of megabits of data every second. As a reminder, we have an array of 1,280 antennas, all tuned to a 12 gigahertz signal, creating a laser-like beam straight out of Dishy. However, we need to angle this beam to track the Starlink satellite moving at a whopping 27,000 kilometers per hour. Using motors isn't feasible as they'd wear out quickly and aren't precise enough. So, the solution is phased array beam steering. Remember our two antenna example? The technology feeds the same signal to both antennas, keeping them in phase with each other. Understanding phase is key. Changing the amplitude alters the signal's strength. Frequency refers to the number of peaks and troughs per second, and phase shifting means moving the signal left or right, measured in degrees. For instance, a 45-degree phase shift looks different from a 180-degree shift. High-tech circuitry in Dishi handles these phase shifts precisely. To angle the beam, Starlink phase shifts the signal sent to one antenna relative to the other. This changes the timing of the peaks and troughs emitted, shifting the constructive interference zone and angling the beam. By continuously adjusting the phase shifts, they can sweep the beam across the sky. With more antennas in a two-dimensional array, they can steer the beam in any direction within a 100-degree field of view. Dishi uses GPS coordinates and the known orbital position of the Starlink satellite to calculate the exact angles needed. The software computes the necessary phase shifts for each antenna, and these are relayed to the beamformers and front-end modules, which control the antennas. These calculations are updated every few microseconds to ensure precise aiming. Now, let's discuss how data is transmitted. Dishi and the satellite send high-frequency electromagnetic waves, but how does this translate to data? They use variations in amplitude and phase to encode binary values. Each combination of amplitude and phase represents a 6-bit binary value, visualized on a constellation diagram. For example, a specific amplitude and phase shift might encode the value 011101. This technique, called 64QAM, Quadrature Amplitude Modulation, is quite complex. With millions of 6-bit symbols creating hundreds of megabits of data per second, this data is then decoded using advanced video codecs like H.264 to stream your favorite TV shows. Starlink's network has several advantages over its competitors. It is cheaper and easier to operate, and the data arrives steadily with low latency and impressive speed. Starlink's low orbit also means that it can provide internet access to remote locations that were previously unreachable. Although simplified here, the technology behind Dishi and Starlink involves intricate science and engineering, making global satellite internet possible. If you have more questions or found this interesting, feel free to comment below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button before you leave, so you never miss out on more content like this. And watch another Today's Gadgets video by clicking one of these cards. Thanks for watching to the end, and I will catch you in the next one.